thought to do in today's class is actually just change, change gears a little bit and look at another topic because what you should be wondering in, in right now is Dr. Marlow's controller tuning works for the first order plus time delay systems. But we know that our systems are not always first order plus time delay. Okay, so well, how do you tune a controller if you've got a second order system or if you've got a third order system? So today's class is about that aspect. And the conclusion that you're going to come to is that most systems are actually first order plus daytime, even if they really are third order, fourth order, or fairly complex. Most systems can be approximated very well by first order plus time delay. So let's take a look at that. And what you're saying here is essentially. <coughs> yeah. Good question, sir. Um, when you change the KC values, why don't you change the CI values? That's for you to try. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> definitely would change KC and CI. Try them both. Okay, so let's consider what we're, what we're looking at here. Here's my process. And here's my output. And my output is some sensor. I'm just going to use symbol A. Whatever quantity we're, set, we're, we're measuring over there. And essentially what we're saying here is that whatever is inside this region over here can be pretty complex. From the moment you, you change this valve position, several things happen in the process. There's the sensor that happens and then you get a value in your control room. There's a lot of complexity in this blue boundary. This could be several trays in the distillation column. The sensor over here could have time delay in acquiring that measurement. The sensor itself can have a first order or a second order transfer function. So there is tremendous complexity in that blue boundary over there. And if you, those of you that are taking 3G at the moment, it's not uncommon that if you had to go to a first order, uh, sorry, first principles model, you'd have in the order of about 100 to 500 ODEs to solve in Aspen. Is what Aspen's doing when it's solving the systems behind it. It's incredibly complex. There's no way we could do this by hand. But what our goal is, is to recognize that despite this complexity, we want a model of the system that is good enough for control. <coughs> so that's our goal here. Just simply good enough for control. Okay. And the model that's often good enough is the first order plus time delay model. that are arbitrary complex. And we're going to follow the following approach. So this method is called the process reaction curve. And it's in chapter 6 of Dr. Marlon's book. I'm going to read <coughs> that derivation over there. Step zero is to start at approximately steady state. So wait for the system to be relatively stable. No system will ever get to steady state, but we can we typically find a system where there's roughly no activity happening that's going to change the system dramatically. And that's where we start our process, reaction curve experiment. 
So our experiment is as follows. We make a step change in the manipulated curve. So simply go to that valve over there and you make a change in a stepwise manner in that manipulated curve. How big should that step be? We're going to look at some guidance in a minute. And what you do next is you observe the control verb and record the values. <coughs> what we're going to do with those values is we're going to find a first order plus time delay transfer function. So find GP of S, which is equal to KP e to the minus theta S divided by tau S plus 1 for the system. <coughs> the last step four is So compare your model to the actual process. Okay, I'll talk a bit about that in, in a minute. So perhaps just let me demonstrate it up here in Simulink. I've got an example here for you to show. So here is I've hidden behind this block, you can't see it, but it's a model of the distillation column. And it's just a model that if I make a change in the flow rate to the steam in the reboil of the distillation column, the output is the temperature on tray four. Okay? So in practice, that would be about 20 ODEs. 20 nominally ODEs is made from liquid equilibrium equations over there heat transfer coefficients that relate the steam flow rate through the heat exchanger to the temperature on tray four of the distillation column. So we simply go and make a step change in that input steam flow. There's a step at time 10. I'm making an increase in four units of steam flow rate. And the output is the temperature on tray four. So run that simulation. And if you were the engineer in the process, that's the data you require. This is in the handout in front of you. So we started at 74 degrees Celsius. And what we notice is the temperature on tray 4 goes up. And that's expected, right? You increase the steam flow rate to the reboil of the distillation column. We're adding more energy into the steam, coming back up into the column. The temperature on tray 4 eventually will rise. And here we see it rise over a period of time. Okay, so this is what you go and do in the plant. You've made a step change, you observe the control <coughs> variable, record the values, the values are here in front of you, and our goal now is to go find three numbers, kp, theta, and tau. Once you have those three numbers, you've got a first order plus time delay. Once you have a first order plus time delay model, you can go choose any controller. K, C, T, S. Okay? So literally by the end of today's class, you're a control engineer. You know how to tune a controller, and you know how to find the first order plus time delay model, and then you know how to fine tune a controller. So pretty much everything we cover in today's class makes you understand and be able to tune a controller. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> Pretty exciting, eh? <laughs> so let's see how we do this. How do you get KP, theta, and tau? Well, let's take a look what should happen to a theoretical transfer function that really is first order. So if our system really was first order plus time delay, what should we expect? And this is now going to be so familiar to us. We've seen these too many times. Here's the time. 
to my manipulated variable. And what we're saying is at time t0, my manipulated variable is constant. At some time t0, I decide to open that valve a little bit. And that's my step in the the process. <coughs> And I'm going to call this amount by which we open our valve delta units. The delta is the deviation of the increase in the beta value. Okay, let's draw this one nicely. This one's got a lot of detail that we're going to add to it. So my control variable. Response. It's going to rise like a first order system, but remember there's a time delay. So there's my process going along in time. At time t0, <coughs> at step input. Is. What happens to the control variable? Nothing changes until the time delay is passed. Okay. Less time zero, we continue going on a flat line for the time delay theta units. So however many minutes or seconds theta is, that's still a flat line for that duration. And then we get our rise to first order system. So this distance over here is theta time units for a true first order plus time delay system. <laughs> By how much does it rise at the end over there? So here's where I started, and there's where I end up. So this distance over here, that total change in the output is by how much? KP times delta. KP times delta. So we're going to call this capital delta. <coughs> Capital delta is that total change, and it's equal to Kp times lower delta. So for those of you that can't see on the other side of the board here, what I've written there, this is important. That total change is delta, and it's equal to Kp times lowercase delta. That's my total output change. The next thing, as you see here right now, we've, we've had actually had two of those three numbers. Theta is this distance, Kp is related to that height change. The only parameter we don't have yet is tau. Yes? Right. Tau is the rate of the rise over here. And you actually showed in the first midterm, you may not have realized it, but go back and look at the first midterm, the time taken for 63% of this rise to occur is tau. So how can we, how can we illustrate that? Well, 63% of this total change is roughly over there. The time it takes to get to that point <coughs> is tau. And this distance over there from when it starts to rise to when it reaches 63% of the total rise is tau. Let me put up some rules of thumb here, and you can prove this to yourself, it's quite easy. As you did in the midterm, we didn't realize it. This is something that you have to know going forward, is that for a first order plus time delay system, your control variable will have response kp times delta, 1e to the minus t minus theta over tau. So that's the first order response for a system. We've derived this before. The theoretical first order time domain response, we inverse the inverse Laplace transform, and we get that, so time delay. So what this says is that after tau theta plus tau minutes, seconds or whatever your units of time, we are at 
63.2% of the KP delta change. Uh, then let's add some numbers here. Theta plus 2 tau, you're going to be at 86.5%. You can go calculate what it is for 3, 4, and 5. The only one I want to talk about is after five time constants, you're going to be at 99.3%. <coughs> so that's a crucial number to remember off the top of your head. It takes five time constants to achieve pretty much 100% of the change. So 99.3, you can't distinguish that from 100. But in other words, it says the time to go from this step to this point where you've essentially reached 100% of the total change, that time is around about five time. And that's generally? Always for a first order plus time analysis. So we use this, even non-control engineers use this. They know that for first order systems, given the time constant, if you make a change in the process, it's going to take five times the time constant for that change to achieve its full value. We all, every, you can ask any chemical engineer, they will know that rule. Five time constants for a process to show its total change. We just have to know that. One time constant to achieve 63%. I don't care if you memorize two, three, and four, but you have to memorize that one time constant is 63%. Five time constants is pretty much 100%. Those are the two numbers you must remember. that you remember is how to use the result of what I'm going to show. So what I'm going to show you here is once you get this plot of the output that rise in the control variable, what we go do is we follow the sequence of rules. So A different way. So the first step is locate the point at 63% of the full response. So the full response is uppercase delta times k <coughs> lowercase delta. So what's the point in time, you have to say that point in time where you've achieved 63% of the full response. And we're going to call this T subscript 63. So T subscript 63, let's be very clear on this diagram what T subscript 63 is. It's the time taken from when you make the change at T naught <coughs> till you see 63%. So in other words, T63 on this particular plot, remember I said this one's going to get tricky. Let's take a look at that. T63 is that duration. From T naught, not from not from where you start to see it rise up, but from T naught where the change was made. This is crucial. So from where the change was made so when did you see how as it can be so okay. 
That's the first one. The next one we're going to do is locate the point in time for 28% of the rise. We're going to call that T28. So it's clear that T28 is going to be less than T68. Uh, T68. So find the point where you've risen 28%. Now I'm not going to add it to this plot because it's just going to make it really cluttered. But 28% of the rise, or roughly 30% of the rise, is the time when we call T28. Okay. Good question. So, um, T63 starts from T0 to the old. But you've risen 63% of its total height. Okay, so like, that's from like T... So T, from like T10, does he have to pass... Does that have to include the right or to be... Like, what could we talk about? We're going to do an example right now. Okay. Yeah, that will clear it up here. So, the next one that you read off is read off delta. Delta is the easy one to read. It's the total change that you've made from where you started off. Remember we said we started steady state. We're going to go down to some height. That's delta. So then you can calculate that Kp is equal to delta divided by delta. The fourth one that you use is you find tau. And tau is equal to... 3 over 2, so 1.5, times T63 minus T28. So that's tau. You've got Kp, you have tau. The last thing that you need is theta. Theta is equal to, your time delay is equal to T63 minus tau. The first example over there showing this decrease, that's our system. Calculate Kp, tau, and theta using those formulas. Take a few minutes, work with the person next to you, apply those rules, and calculate the three values Kp, tau, and theta.
10.5. What do we get for theta? is always in units of time, so 10.5 minutes. Theta is also in units of time of minutes, of seconds. Oh, seconds in this example, sorry. Thank you. How close were you to the truth? Pretty good. So remember we said back earlier, step four, always check the results. Okay, so one way you can do this is if you build this model in Excel or MATLAB, you can go simulate what the response to a first order system would be if I had used those values of KC, uh, sorry, of KP, T, and tau and theta. So I'll show you one way you can do that here in simulate. You can go take that same step input and apply it to your transfer function. So what was KP? You said it was minus 11. Tau, we said, was 10.5. And the time delay, we said, was 18.5. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is compare the process output to our simulation. And they should agree. Okay, so we're going Okay, so yellow was our actual data, purple was our guess of what the function <coughs> So pretty good. Alright, so the actual values behind behind there, you, obviously in practice we will never know this. But KP was minus 11, tau was 10, and beta was 20. Okay, so pretty good values that we so give a go uh, now to the second example on the sheet in front of you. And for this distillation task. The distillation problem, I, we can never see what's behind there. We don't ever know the that's the reality. But give that a chance. Okay, so what's lowercase? 
uppercase delta in this example. Well, four units, uppercase delta. Okay. okay. So the fact that we're at 74 degrees, 84 degrees, that it doesn't matter. We're only interested in the deviation. So we got it. We made a four unit input change. We saw a delta of 10 units. What is KP? 2.5. So our gain for the system is 2 and a half units. 1963. 43. 48. 40. Aren't we have such differences? Why is there such a divergence in, in numbers? Some people are saying 40, some people are 48. Some people can't read. <laughs> There's noise, okay? This is always going to be the reality for you. There's always going to be noise. There's always going to be error in your KP, theta, and tau. Okay? So what is the implication of that? If there's error in your KP, theta, and tau, remember what are we using these KP, theta, and tau for? To go tune our controller. Okay? So then you go and fine tune your controller to try and find minimum IAE. This is telling you if there's so much noise and error in the system, fine tune your controller for making IAE really, really small is almost you're, you're just playing around with noise. Okay? So just bear that in mind when you're tuning your controller. Let's take a look though and finish this up. T63, what was some typical values is between 40 and 48. So you can pick 45, for example, here. T28, 19, 26, 29, 30. <laughs> okay, so let's take uh, 26. And then someone calculate tau for me from this, please. Should be a number in the order of about 16. Okay, later. Seventeen. Okay, take a look at your graph. Does seventeen make sense? Should, is there a time delay of about seventeen units? Roughly, yes or no? Okay, always double check theta. Theta is the one that's got the most subjectivity to it. Always check it on your quant. Okay, time delay. So what I mean by that is, always check that this theta here matches what's on your quant. 